you've just made a petri and you're looking at it in the mold and looking at the top where you drop the inks and it looks so pretty and you are so excited because you're thinking yes I'm gonna get an awesome result and you start taking it out of the mold and you look at the edges and it is looking super promising and then you flip it over and this happened white sank to areas where you didn't want it to go. But everything else about this is really pretty. Well, you don't want to chuck this because resin's not cheap. So let's save this and turn this into the Petri you had wanted. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. Let's tackle this problem. I use two methods to remove the blobs. One is manual, the other is electric. I'll need either a craft knife or a motorized rotary tool. I also want a receptacle of some sort to catch the dust and shavings. This is just an old grocery bag. I'll need a brush to periodically clear away those dust and shaving particles and some 91 or preferably 99% isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel or cloth for wiping. An interesting thing to know about these blobs is that they are usually rather thin, so they don't require too much effort to remove them. Let's use the craft knife first. Please, please, please be careful using this method. These are very sharp. Now, most of these type of tools, this one's an, an ex, uh, the Exacto brand, but there are lots of versions of this. Most of these come with blades that look like this. This blade, called a number 11 blade, is not going to help us for this task. And it's also more dangerous, I think, because it's really pointy on top of being really sharp. The best shape blade for this is what's called a number 10 blade or curved edge blade. Many kits come with one included or you can buy them separately. To remove an undesirable spot, I rest the curve of the blade on the blemish. I press down and then I swing the blade back and forth as I'm pressing, letting it cut into the resin and create shavings. <laughs> now for any of you that just gasped at the seeming destruction of the Petri, <laughs> fear not. When we add a new resin top coat later, you will never, I mean never, know anything ever happened here. I promise. Even if you slip and scratch your piece like this, <laughs> again, don't give it a second thought. If you gasped, tell me in the comments <laughs> and tell me like what your resin finishing experiences have been. Now, often a few swings back and forth is enough to get through the thickness of your blob entirely. You may have to reposition the blade a few times if the blob's pretty wide. So just do that as needed to remove all the things you don't like. A couple of drops of alcohol can quickly show you your progress. Now that you have a sense of what it's like to do it manually, let's see a rotary tool do it. For this, I tend to like this shape of bit, or this one. Like the curve of the blade, the round edge sits nicely on the surface. Flat sides have to be parallel to the Petri at all times to really be effective. So I prefer the ease of rounded bits or burrs as they're called. Now the advantage of the pointy end at the very end of this rounded bit is that it lets you get it teeny little blemishes while easily seeing them as you work. 
when using a rotary tool, absolutely wear eye protection and a fine particle dust mask. Resin dust is not something to be inhaled, and this will definitely kick up some dust. Please protect your lungs. I've got my Petri resting in a trash bag to catch the dust. Some people do this while keeping the resin piece wet with water, but, <laughs> you know, this is electric, this tool. So, you know, I'm not loving the water and electric tool hanging out together idea. I find periodic brushing works just fine. When I need a clear view of how I'm doing, I do a quick pass with just a few drops of isopropyl alcohol. And I choose alcohol because it evaporates quickly, especially 99%. It evaporates almost immediately. And once everything's dry again, I go back in with my tool. Now, when it comes to rotary tools, there are lots of brands available at all different price points, even some that are meant for manicures, I think. I've personally used a Dremel, a one made by Dremel, for years because it's reliable, it's useful for lots of tasks, including drilling when I make jewelry. So if your studio can handle a new tool, these are super versatile. This is a Model 3000. It's a good size. It has a wide variable speed range and it's pretty powerful. Now, I've linked a list of rotary tools for you to choose from with all different price points. I would say to avoid cordless options, however. It's kind of a drag to have to wait for them to recharge, and they usually have a lot less torque or power, so I am not a fan. I definitely recommend getting the ones that you can plug in. Okay, we have removed all of our resin boo-boos. <laughs> so now let's make this all shiny and beautiful again. For that, I want to add a clear coat of resin. Before starting, I made sure that my piece was dust-free and oil or fingerprint free. For the resin, I want a slightly thicker doming coat because it can sit on top without running over the sides. So I'll use room temperature clear cast 7050 for that. Without warming, this resin is fairly viscous, in other words, thicker, so it can easily dome. Now you're definitely welcome to let the resin run down the sides. That's a fine look. For me, it's just more work. But if you choose to go that route, make sure to tape the back of your Petri to protect it against resin drips forming down there, or tape along the edge here with a long enough piece of tape that hangs down below the bottom so that resin can't creep down and curve under to the bottom as it's running off the sides. I hope that made sense. Now I'm going to go a commando. <laughs> and not tape anything. I am just going to use these little silicone cups to raise the Petri off the table surface though, just in case there is a drip, because, you know, I'm brave, but I am cautious. <laughs> Regardless of which way you go, make sure your piece is fully level, because the Real beauty of a dome is when it's nice and even. I'm mixing up 15 milliliters of resin, which is actually enough for two of these top coats, or for this and maybe a piece of jewelry. I just don't want to mix less than 15 milliliters to be sure I get a good mix. The resin companies recommend that you mix even larger quantities than that because as your mixing quantities get smaller your acceptable margin of error shrinks too so you have to be all the more precise with tiny amounts so if you don't feel confident 
save this type of small top coating for when you have leftover resin from a larger batch that you mixed up for a different project. Since this resin is room temperature and in Michigan winter, <laughs> that's a little cold. I've certainly got bubbles, but they will be super easy to resolve since this is just a top coat. The torch should have no problem getting them. I start out by pouring a puddle of resin in the middle. And then the next important step is spreading the resin over every nook and cranny I made with the Dremel. This is where other bubbles could form as you sort of try to start spreading the resin. If you kind of just poured it and let it run on its own, it might not really go down into a crevice and cause like a little vacuum pocket and which would be a bubble. So spreading it this way really ensures that it gets into all those little nooks and crannies and minimizes any of that bubble, extra bubble thing forming. With that done, I add more resin a little at a time and I start to enlarge the area that it's covering. I hit the resin with a torch very quickly every now and then to pop some bubbles. And then I very carefully drag resin right up to the edge. Now, if you've got a Lazy Susan type turntable-y thing, it's a big help for this because you want to make sure you get the resin to touch every speck of the edge. Find an angle when lighting makes looking at your piece easy to see where the resin has made it to the edge and where it still needs to go. Like sometimes because you're working clear on clear, you can think you've covered an area and then you let the resin cure and then you look at it and you're like, oh man, I missed that spot. So really take your time with this and meticulously check every little speck along the edge. Periodically, you may want to add more tiny amounts of resin at a time to make a nice dome with an, a rounded edge. And you want to do a little bit at a time because if you pour too much, the volume of the resin will just fall over the edge. It won't be able to hold on. With a good doming resin, capillary action will keep the resin from falling over the edge. If it's not too much, there's like a sweet spot for like the perfect amount. And just you'll figure that out drop by drop. When you feel you've got the coverage you want, do a last torching for bubbles and put your piece to bed. Stay tuned to see the finished piece. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to do that so that you don't miss any future videos and click that bell so that you'll be notified when future videos come out. 24 hours later, let's take a look at our resin makeover. I'm wearing gloves just to avoid fingerprints on this awesome finish. The edge worked out very nicely. I really love the contrast between the high shine top and the semi-matte edge. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, look at our new piece. The top coat adds even more depth. If you didn't know what this was like yesterday, would you know that any cosmetic surgery had taken place on this piece? Let me know in the comments and tell me what resin pieces you are likely to rescue now. Also, what else are you doing with resin these days? What else might you be struggling with? Or would you like to see done with resin? I'd be grateful if you'd help my channel continue by sharing this video and by checking out the links I've added to the description box for you. Thank you for all that you do. Let your creative nature shine. See you soon. Bye now.